you don't mind, thank you. Before I get started with the next lesson, does anybody have a question that you'd like to ask at this time? Raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. All right, I'll try to slow down, make sure you can write them. Anybody else have a question of any kind with relating to soul winning or the lesson? <clears throat> All right, Gabe, why don't you go ahead and start the, the, the live stream? All right, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here today. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for being such a wonderful, wonderful God. Thank you for all these dear people who are here for the Soul Winning Clinic. Thank you again for all that you've done for us the last couple of days. And bless us now at this time. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Last lesson I taught, I forgot to have the microphone on, so I have to reteach the whole lesson. If you'd be sure and uh, laugh at all the appropriate times that I tell jokes, so that way everyone on the Internet thinks it's going well. But anyway, <laughs> we... Um, we're going to talk about this lecture, the benefits of daily soul winning. The benefits of daily soul winning. I, um, I taught you it's possible to be a daily soul winner. And now I'm going to give you the benefits of it. The benefits of it. There's uh, 13 benefits. All right. Psalm 68, verse 19. Write this reference down. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation, Selah. You know, <clears throat> I thank God that God loads us daily with benefits, aren't you? I mean, every day there's benefits. We got out of bed today. We um, had warm uh, water to take a shower with. We have indoor plumbing. We have electricity. Um, in the wintertime, we have heat. In the summertime, we have air conditioning. I mean, how many of you came to church in an automobile of, of some kind, right? I mean, you, 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 we've got automobiles, we've got trucks, we've got cars. I mean, there's just so much about our lives that every single day God loads us with benefits. Well, I believe if you're a daily soul winner, then every day you're going to have a benefit from God with, with regards to soul winning. So there are many benefits. Here's just a few, 13 of them. Number one, write this down. Every day of your life, you'll get to make an impact in the kingdom of God. Was that slow enough for you? <laughs> she said, please slow down. I, I, I was trying. All right, number, number one. Every day of your life, you will get to make an impact in the kingdom of God. If you're a daily soul winner, number one, here's a benefit. Every day of your life, you will get to make an impact in the kingdom of God. Matthew 21 verse 43. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 43. Therefore say I unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. I believe that um, this is Jesus speaking to Israel and he was saying to them you've had the kingdom of God all during the Old Testament. Now you're rejecting it. He said fine. I am taking it away from you, and I'm going to give it to a nation that's going to bring forth the fruits thereof. All right, the fruits of God's kingdom are souls saved and lives changed. That's the fruits. That's it. And guess what? If you're a daily soul winner, every day you get to make an impact in the kingdom of God. You know what? I don't ever want God to take the kingdom of God away from me and give it to another preacher bringing forth the fruits thereof. I don't ever want God to take away the kingdom of God from our church and give it to a church other than us that's bringing forth the fruits thereof. I, and I believe that. I mean, every day, you know what? When I see someone saved it, it, every day, in my heart, I think I made an impact in the kingdom of God today and God's gonna allow me to do that again. Because I'm making an impact. Do you know why God took it away from Israel? They weren't making an impact anymore. They, 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 they looked at the New Testament and said, no, no, we don't believe in Jesus. He's not the Messiah. We're not going to acknowledge any of the New Testament books. We're, I mean, so God basically said, okay, you're, you're useless to me. You're useless to me in my kingdom. So I'm going to take it away from you and give it to someone else. Now, I get to make an impact in the kingdom of God every single day of my life. I suppose if the average preacher 
thinks about this, they may only make an impact in the kingdom of God two days a week, Sunday and Wednesday. And that's it. But if you think about it, if you see someone saved every day, you get to make an impact in the kingdom of God every single day. Number two, what's another benefit of being a daily soul winner? You are consciously aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day -day basis. You are constantly aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me give you uh, three references. Romans 13 verses 11 and 12. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. You know, if you're a daily soul winner, you are consciously aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, most preachers have used this passage to talk to their church folk about how most Christians are sleepwalking. They're sleeping through their Christian life. They're not awake. They're not aware of the kingdom of God and God on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's true. God says right here, it is time, knowing the time, it is high time to awake out of sleep. You know, too many Christians, too many Christians are sleepwalking through their Christian life. And sadly, a lot of preachers are too, you know. I mean, they really are. But guess what? You get to be consciously aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day -day basis. Ephesians 5, verses 14 through 16. Ephesians 5, verses 14 through 16. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but is wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. All right, God tells us to awake, thou that sleepest. Arise from the dead. God will give thee light. And it's not talking about someone who's unsaved. I don't believe so. I believe he's talking about God's people. Wake up. Look and see what God wants you to do. Wake up. Now watch this. In verse 16, it says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Now, have you ever... Uh, heard a preacher preach on this verse, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I, I've heard preachers preach on this, but I've heard uh, preachers misapply mis, uh, it. I've heard preachers say the word redeem means to, um, to buy back. Have you ever heard someone say that? You, you, you redeemed it, you bought it back, and, um, and they try to apply that definition in this verse. That's not what this means. The word redeem, like many words in the Bible, have multiple definitions. And what you need to do is apply the appropriate definition to the specific word that's used. The word redeem, if you pull up an 1828 Webster's Dictionary, the English language, it also means to rescue from loss. That's what the word redeem means. And that's exactly the appropriate definition in this verse. Redeeming the time. You're not buying time back. Redeeming the time means rescue from loss. Have you ever lived a day, and when you put your head on the pillow, you look back and said, what did I accomplish today? It was just a wasted day. You ever spend the whole day in bed? You ever spend the day watching television? You ever spend the day just being lazy? Whatever, right? Well, man, once you put your head in your pillow at night, guess what? That day is forever gone, and you'll never get it back. It, it could be what you consider a day that was lost. Well, if you redeem the time, you rescue your time from loss. And how do you do that? Well, it says, awake, thou that sleepest. Awake, wake up. Be consciously aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day -day basis. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For, now watch this. This is a soul winner's verse. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Why is it that some people in our community have not the knowledge of God? It may be that too many Christians are sleepwalking. You know, God says, wake up awake to righteousness and sit not. And he said this, some have not the knowledge of God and it's a shameful thing. If we are the church that God wants us to be, everybody in this community should at least know about the knowledge of God. If we're the type of church we're supposed to be. If there's people across the street that have no idea about the knowledge of God and salvation, it's not their fault. 
It's our fault. God literally said that. I speak this to your shame. Who do you think Paul was writing to? He was writing to the church at Corinth. Where was the church at Corinth? It was in a city called Corinth. However many people lived in that city, here's what Paul said. He said, awake to righteousness and sin not. He goes, some have not the knowledge of God. That's some people in the city of Corinth. Some have not the knowledge of God. And he said this, it's your fault. I speak this to your shame. So guess what? If I become a daily soul winner, I get to be consciously aware of God and the things of God on a day-to-day basis. I'm not sleepwalking the Christian life. I'm awake. I'm awake. Number three, when you sin, you get right with God more quickly. This is a benefit to being a daily soul winner. When you sin, you get right with God more quickly. Here's the verse, a reference. Psalm 86, verses 1 through 5. Psalm 86, verses 1 through 5. Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. All right? So here's what he's saying. He says, daily I cry out for your mercy. Daily. So guess what? Listen to this carefully. You will not see someone saved every day of your life if you're not right with God and if you're living in sin. You're just not going to. It ain't going to happen. And then guess what? Whenever I sin and I still have to see somebody saved, God bless you. Whenever I still need to see somebody saved and I, man, I blew it. I sinned. I did something I shouldn't have done. Well, guess what? It forces me to get right with God quickly. So here I am, right? I'm driving down the road in my car. Holy Spirit, help me to cross the path of someone who wants to be saved Help me to lead him to you. I pull over and the Holy Spirit says, what did you do today? What did you say? What did you do? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I know. You want me to bless you and see someone saved when you did that? All right, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done it. Hey, is, uh, is uh, 1 John 1, 9 true or not? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. To cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Watch this. If you're going to be a daily soul winner, you need to be a clean vessel. That doesn't mean you can't ever sin. It just means when you do, you better get right with God. You better confess it. You know, I remember one time, my life changed when I heard a preacher one time say this. You know, here's what I was taught, right? When you have your prayer time, your devotion time in the morning, Write a list of all the sins that you committed the, night be- the day before. Confess it to God. You know, start your prayer time off confessing your sin. That's fine and dandy. But I heard one preacher one time said, don't wait till tomorrow morning in your prayer time, your devotion time to, to confess. You confess it right now. When you make a sin, say something, do something, think something, whatever it is, and the Holy Spirit convicts you, don't say, all right, tomorrow I'll confess it and get right with you. No, if you're a daily soul winner, you can't afford to wait till tomorrow. You got to confess right then. So what's the benefit of being a daily soul winner? When you sin, you get right with God more quickly. You know what it is? The time between you sinning and the time between you getting right with God is always dangerous time because you may not get right with God. It may continue on for a day, another day, a week, a month, a year. Most people, when they fall out of God's will, when they leave the will of God for their life, it's not like they just woke up one day and said, I think I'm going to leave the will of God for my life. No, it, it was a process of every day or every week or even every month of not getting right with God. And then eventually it culminated in I'm leaving God's will for my life because they didn't deal with their sin right away. So what's the benefit of being a daily soul owner? When I sin... I can, it forces me to get right with God more quickly. And then number four, along that line, it forces you to stay right with God. It forces you to stay right with God. 
Psalm 78, verse 37. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. If I'm going to be a daily soul winner, not only it, I, I get right with God more quickly when I sin, it forces me to stay right with God. Okay, listen this carefully. You think for a second that the devil hasn't ever come to me in these 16 years and two months and say, why don't you just leave God's will for your life? Wake up now. Do you think God's, uh, the devil hasn't done that to me? Sure he has. Why don't you just quit? Why don't you just not be a pastor anymore? Why don't you just not go soul winning anymore? Why don't you stop tithing? Why don't you stop whatever, right? The devil's come to me, but you know what I always think? I haven't seen somebody saved today yet. And if I give in to the devil, I'm not going to see somebody saved. And that person just might end up dying and going to hell. I may have been their only opportunity to get saved. You know, the Bible tells us everybody in the world gets a chance to, at salvation. Did you know that? It says it. Titus chapter 2, verse 11, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Every single person on this planet, God's grace that brings salvation will appear to them. Now, it may only be once, but it'll appear. It may be a hundred times. It really depends. But everybody, at least once in their life, the grace of God that bringeth salvation will appear to them. Now, how does that happen? Well, it probably happens many different ways. But one way, for sure, it happens with a soul winner. For sure. I mean, that's God's grace bringing salvation to that person. And if I don't do my job, that person, you know, that may have been his only chance. I'm talking about from now until the day he dies. I mean, he may not get another opportunity. And I don't want to, I don't want to not be right with God and have someone go to hell because of it. You know, one of the, one of the most terrible thoughts some church member gets critical of his preacher, gets bitter at him, says, I'm not coming back to this church anymore. So guess what they do? They don't ever go soul winning. They don't bring visitors to church. They're not tithing. They're not supporting missions. All because they got bitter and angry at their preacher. And now somebody is going to spend eternity in hell because they didn't stay right with God. That's a scary thought. Do you know why I stay right with God? Because I don't want anybody to go to hell because I left God's will for my life. So, being a daily soul owner forces you to stay right with God. That's a benefit. Number five, I like this. You get to see an answered prayer every day. You get to see an answered prayer every day. Can I ask you a question? If you're not a daily soul owner, let me ask you a question. When's the last time God answered your prayer? When's the last time you prayed a prayer and God answered it? If you have to think more than a day ago, do you realize if you'd become a daily soul winner and you'd say this, dear Lord, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you today. Help me to cross the path of someone who wants to be saved and help me to lead them to you. If you get to see someone saved that day, at least you had one answer to prayer that day. No matter what. How many times have you gone soul winning and you said, man, that was a divine appointment from God. I mean, that was all him. Have you ever felt that way? Every day you get to feel that way if you see someone saved every day. Wow, God did that. God answered my prayer. Um, Psalm 17, verses 1 through 8. Hear the right, O Lord. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feign lips. Let my sentence come before thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress concerning the works of men. By, thy, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in, the, in thy paths and, my, and that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee. For thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thy eye. Hold, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. When you go soul winning every day and you pray for God to help you cross the path of someone who wants to be saved and you ask God to help you to lead them to, uh, to him, you get to see a prayer answered every single day. 
Now, I may not have multiple prayers answered today, but if I see someone saved today, that'll be one. And that'll encourage your, your, your prayer life, man. I mean, listen, if God will hear your prayer to see someone saved today, don't you think he can hear your prayer when it comes to your financial needs too? Don't you think you, he can hear your prayer when you cry out to him concerning your family? Don't you think he'll hear your prayer in other things as well? I'm telling you, man, when you, when you start getting God answering your prayers, it's not just for soul winning. It's for everything. I mean, it's just pretty exciting. Next, number six. What's the sixth benefit of being a daily soul winner? You will always have joy in your heart every day. You will always have joy in your heart every day. Did you ever have a day recently that you were just angry the whole day? Did you ever have a day recently that you were discouraged the whole day? Did you have a day recently that you felt like you just were going through the motions? And by the way, stop blaming other people, by the way. Yeah, I felt that way, and it's your fault. <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever. It's not your wife's fault. It's not your husband's fault. It's not your children's fault. It's not your parents' fault. It's not your preacher's fault. If you have a day that you are just going through the motions, you have no joy, you're discouraged, or you're angry, it's your fault. That's whose fault it is. But guess what? I'll read this verse to you. 1 Thessalonians 2.20, for ye are our glory and joy. Paul was saying to the church at Thessalonica, he had led them to Christ. He had started that church. He said, you are our joy. Do you know that if you have someone saved today, it's going to put joy in your heart? You could be having a bad day. You know what the remedy is? Go see somebody saved. and Put joy in your heart. It'll change your day. That's what it does for me. I'm not telling you I never get angry. I'm not telling you I never get discouraged. I'm not telling you that there are days I don't feel like I'm going through the motions. But I'm telling you this, as soon as I see someone saved that day, there's joy in my heart. Makes me feel better. I remember Bob Gray used to say this, you preachers, when you're leaving the office and going home, before you go home, why don't you stop, pull over, get somebody, witness to them, see them saved, and then go home. You'll have a smile on your face when you go home as opposed to all the stress and pressure of the ministry on your mind while you're going home. You know, a lot of times in the past, I've had stress and pressure from the ministry, and then I'd come home, and I wouldn't be so joyful to be around my kids and my wife. That pressure, that stress, the, the spiritual warfare of the devil, oh, sometimes it's hard to just leave it in the car when you're going home. But you know what? If I see someone saved before I go home, what's fresh on my mind? That person just got saved. What's in my heart? Joy. And at least, yeah, there's still pressure. There's still stress. There's still spiritual warfare. But I get to go home with joy in my heart. I mean, that's what Bob Gray taught us. I mean, just telling you, man, every single day that you see someone saved, you get to have joy in your heart every day, at least for that moment and for that reason. I'm not saying all your problems go away, but every day you have joy. Number seven. When the devil fights you, you can actually fight back that day. When the devil fights you, you can actually fight back that day. Acts chapter 26, verses 16 through 18. Let me read that to you. Acts 26, verses 16 through 18. It says this, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things which I, which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Number seven, when you go soul winning every day, when you become a daily soul winner, a benefit is when the devil fights you, you can actually fight back that day. Have you ever just, the devil messed with you and you just wanted to punch him in the face? <laughs> I have. Well, guess what, man? Go see someone saved. You get to do that. Sometimes the devil's fought me, and you know what I've done? I said, brother, not brother. I don't call the devil brother. I say, man, I'm going to show you. I'm going to go see two people saved today. Whenever the devil fights me, I like to fight him back. And the best way to fight him back is to see somebody saved. 
But sometimes I, 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 I up the ante. I, I'm not going to just see one state. I'm going to see two. You know, so the fact of the matter is, if you get to go soul winning every day, a benefit is every single day you can stick it to the devil. I remember this one preacher said, when the devil fights you, don't listen to him. Don't run away from God. Don't, don't fall into temptation and sin. He says, take your finger and stick it in his eyeball. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to do that to the devil? Just take your, just stick it right there. Well, you can somewhat do that, spiritually speaking, by seeing somebody saved. You know, whenever the devil attacks me, I always turn up what I'm doing for God. I don't do less. I, I've been pastoring for 28 years. I have seen so many Christians over these years. When the devil fights them, they stop going to church. They stop going soul winning. They, they stop whatever ministry they're in. They, they do less for God. They back it off. I'm like the exact opposite. When the devil fights me financially, I always increase my giving I don't back down. I don't understand people that stop tithing when the devil's fighting them, financially speaking. You're giving the devil exactly what he wants. When he fights you in finances, don't stop tithing. Good grief. You're just saying, devil, tell me what to do. I'll do it. I don't want the devil to tell me what to do. When the devil discourages me and fights me and gives me grief, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to stop what I'm doing for God. I'm going to do more of it. More of it. Because it makes the devil mad. Next, number eight. What's an eighth benefit of being a daily soul winner? You can now claim the soul winner's prayer promise when you pray. Oh, I love this. You can now claim the soul winner's prayer promise when you pray. Did you know there's a soul winner's prayer promise in the Bible? It's John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. The verse does not end there. It goes on to say that. Do you know what the word that is in reference to? The first part of the verse. The the, the that is referring to God's chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That, here we go. Whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. You know what it is with prayer promises in the Bible, right? In order for the prayer promise to be valid in your life, you have to meet the condition of the prayer promise. What's the condition of this prayer promise? You being a soul winner. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. By the way, Whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, I'll give it to you if you're a soul winner. So guess what I do? When I go soul winning and I see someone saved, if I've got a heavy burden, a heavy prayer on my heart, I'll, I'll read that verse and I'll say, Dear Lord, I just saw someone saved. You, asked, you said to me that whatsoever I'll ask the Father in, in your name, you'll give it to me. Lord, I'm a daily soul winner. I'm doing what you called me to do, what you ordained me to do. Now, God, I need you to come through for me with this prayer I'm telling you that is a benefit to being a daily soul winner wow soul winners prayer promise right there number nine what's the ninth benefit rewards that you'll receive in heaven the rewards that you'll receive in heaven Daniel 12 3 they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament they that turn They that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Listen carefully. I believe your glorified body in heaven will shine brightly as a star based on how many people you influenced to be saved in your lifetime. That's what I believe. That's what I think Daniel 12, 3 is talking about. Have you ever looked up in the the sky at night? And see, some stars are brighter than others. Some stars look bigger. Some stars look smaller. Some stars, you can barely see them. Some stars, it almost feels like you can reach out and touch them. That's how it's going to be in heaven. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You know, I have long lived this way. Everything I do for the kingdom of God has two objectives. 
Number one, directly see somebody saved. Number two, indirectly influence people to get saved. Those are the two focuses that I have in everything I do. Why do I tithe? Because I know the money that is put in this offering plate will be used some way, somehow, to, to influence people to get saved. So every time I tithe, it's an indirect influence that I have of seeing people saved. How about missions giving? At our church, we support missionaries that are soul winners. And whenever I give money to missions, I am indirectly helping somebody uh, get saved. How about if I give money to the bus ministry? I'm helping people get saved because in this church, our bus ministry, we pick up people and bring them to church. If it's the first time they've come to this church, we're going to witness to them. And almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them get saved. I'm helping people get saved. Then when I go soul winning, I'm helping people get saved. When I pass out gospel tracts, I'm, I'm helping people get saved. Everything I do in the kingdom of God, I am always have this focus. I'm either directly or indirectly influencing people to get saved. And God says, if you live that way, they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. When you get to heaven, your reward will be great. And then 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 19, for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? You know what the crown of rejoicing is? It's the soul winner's crown. Paul said, you are our crown of rejoicing. How? It, said, it says this, when you're in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. You know what? When you become a soul winner, you know what one of the rewards is? When you get to heaven, you get to see all the people that you influenced to get saved all the people they're not going to come and you know give you glory it's not that jesus gets all the glory but why do you think paul said you are our crown of rejoicing because when he gets to heaven he's going to rejoice at all the people that are there that he led to christ i'm telling you man that's that's a big deal i'm you don't get glory god all the glory goes to god and by the way, you know how it happens? Do you know how all the glory gets given to God when you get to heaven? You know how it happens? It tells us in Revelation, uh, let's see here. I don't have it in my notes. Revelation chapter 4. Let me pull it out here real quick here. Let's see here. Ah, my fingers. Revelation 4. Verse 10, here we go. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Listen carefully. What is the purpose of you earning crowns with the way you live throughout your life the purpose of it is when i get to heaven i got all these crowns and i'm going to cast them at his feet i don't want to stand before jesus and have no crowns to cast at his feet i often tell people the crowns that you get in heaven are not going to be displayed on your mantle in your mansion they're not going to be displayed there. You ever gone to someone's house that was a sports person, an athlete or whatever, they got all these trophies that they, you know, all these things they've earned. Well, listen carefully. That ain't going to be your mansion in heaven. When you stand before him on your judgment day, Jesus is going to say this. Look what I did for you. He's going to show you the wounds in his hands, in his side, in his feet, from the, from the crown of thorns on his head. He goes, that's how much I loved you. How much did you love me? There's a song, shall I go and empty handed? Shall I meet my Savior so? Nothing to cast at his feet. Man, you earn, you earn these soul winning crowns. It's all, give the glory to God. You get to cast them at his feet. And if you don't earn these crowns, you won't have anything cast at his feet. So it's not you getting glory and bragging about yourself. Look at all the souls I won. No, it's, Lord, this is for you. I did all this for you. You get all the glory. Rewards that you'll receive in heaven because you're a daily soul winner. Next, what's a, a tenth benefit? 
extra protection that God will give to you. Extra protection. How many of you understand the spiritual warfare is intense? <laughs> wow, man, is it ever intense. I keep thinking, one of these days, the devil's going to leave us for a season. <laughs> it just keeps getting more and more intense here at Hopewell. The devil's fight, and the, I mean, it's, just, it's, an, it's an assault. The more the devil fights, the more protection I need. Let me give you the reference. Psalm 84, verses 9 through 12. Psalm 84, verses 9 through 12. Behold, O God, our shield, look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Here it is. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. You know what? I need God to be my shield. I need God to protect me. So I'm just going to keep opening the doors to heaven. <laughs> I'd rather, you ever thought about that? I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked, uh, tents of wickedness. You know what? I've used that verse in the past like this. Hey, I'd rather get to heaven and all I get to do is open doors rather than burn in hell forever, be in the tents of the wicked. You know, I, I kind of think there's a bigger meaning behind that verse. Do you know when you go soul winning, you know what you're doing? Isn't Jesus the door? Right? When you go soul winning, you're opening the door for people to walk through. I, if all I get to do is open doors, for people to get, you know, to get to heaven. You know, Jesus is the door. Hey, you want to receive him as your Savior? Here's how you do it. Let me pray with you. Psh, open the door. Man, I'd rather do that for all. You see, when you, when you die, what do you want to be known as? The greatest pastor. Largest church. This, that, and yet. No, no. If, if, if on my tombstone it just says, the soul winner. That's all I want to be known as. A soul winner. What do you do as a soul winner? You're opening the door for people to go to heaven. Jesus is the door. You're just opening it for them so they can go to heaven. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Boy, isn't that, isn't that something? That's a big meaning. I think that's a meaning that we often miss. Next, number 11. What's the 11th benefit of being a daily soul owner? The promise of God taking care of all your needs. The promise of God taking care of all your needs. Matthew 6, one of my favorite verses. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. By the way, you do that by soul winning. And his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You know what? I've been a daily soul winner for 16 years and two months. And as I look back on it, you know what I've learned? God has taken care of all my needs. After being a daily soul winner for all these years, after being a pastor for 23 years, God gave my wife and I the house that we live in now. And you know what? It's a better house than I ever thought I could ever afford and ever have. I never thought I'd ever have the house that God's given to us. I get to have vehicles. You know, you know I, <laughs> I, I have a, a 2019 Ford F-150. It costs $48,000. I have never had a $48,000 vehicle in my life until I had this one. And you know what? How I got it? My dad bought it for me. He said, son, go pick out a, any truck you want at the dealership and I'll pay for it for you after my 50th birthday. You know why I, you know why I think that happened? Well, my, my dad loves me, of course, but I think God, you know, said, hey, you're a daily soul winner. Let me give you something that, that would be a blessing to you. You know, I mean, God has done that time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. 16 years and two months, God has taken care of all of my needs because I put the kingdom of God first. I'm a daily soul winner. That's a benefit. That's a blessing. I, I mean, I can give more than just my house and my truck, but I can do other things. Do you know, in 16 years and two months, I, okay, I've not spent one night in the hospital. The best I can tell, the best I can remember, the only night I ever spent overnight in the hospital was when I was born. The best that I can tell. 
I don't remember ever spending the night in the hospital other than, I don't even remember that. I've, I've been told I spent the night in the hospital. But, you know, I know, I'm not saying that people that go to the hospital, they're not right with God. I'm not saying that at all. So please don't, don't, don't imply that. What I'm saying is maybe, you know, maybe I'd be in, a, in the hospital more if I wasn't a daily soul winner. Maybe God's keeping me out of the hospital because I got someone to see saved today. The protection that God can give you. I mean, it's just amazing. Extra protection if you're a daily soul winner. Next. Oh, the promise of God taking care of all of your needs. That's, that was point number 11. That's where I was. Number 12. Only got two more points, and then we're done with this lecture. God will give you wisdom in life. A benefit of being a daily soul winner. God will give you wisdom in life. Proverbs 11.30. Ready? The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls, guess what it says, is wise. And then Daniel 2, verse 21. Watch this. Daniel 2, verse 21. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. All right, watch this. Okay, God gives wisdom to the wise, right? Is that what God says? He gives wisdom to the wise. Well, what can you do that's wise? Win souls. He that winneth souls is wise. God says, if you are wise enough to win souls, here's what God says, I'm going to give you more wisdom. I have learned so much in my Bible studies in recent years, last 16 years. Man, I'm telling you what, the Word of God just, it, it opens up to me I, I learn wisdom so much and i'm going to tell you i believe it's because god gives wisdom to someone who is already wise and so if you are wise enough to be a soul winner i promise you god's going to give you wisdom i believe that with preaching man sometimes i preach and sometimes you know when i write my outlines i'm like wow god this is amazing god bless you wow man where did this come from it came from god giving wisdom to someone who was wise enough to be a soul winner that's a benefit hey man you want to preach with more wisdom you want to study the bible and gain more wisdom be a daily soul winner and watch how god just opens up wisdom to your understanding number 13 Here's the 13th benefit. You will be better. You will, you will better. A, uh, is this a complete sentence? You will better able to give God, to give glory to God. I, I, I just, you will be, be better able to give glory to God. I think that's how it's supposed to be. You will be better able to give glory <laughs> to God. I got to put the word be in there. All right. John 15, 8, ready? Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. How can I glorify God? Bear much fruit. That's one way I can give glory to God. And if I see someone saved every single day, I will be in a better position. I'll be better able to give glory to God. I will. Do you want to give glory to God in your life? There's no better way to give glory to God in your life than to bear much fruit. How can I bear much fruit? Well, being daily soul winner is one of those ways to do it. That's a benefit. These 13 things are benefits of being a daily soul winner. Anybody have a question before we take a break? Yes, sir. First Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. 15, 34. Anybody else have a question from the lecture? Yes, ma'am. Psalm 78, 37. Six thirty-three. 16. John 15, 16. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anybody else have a question? 